What's up everyone, welcome to part four of our deep learning concepts tutorial series. And in this one, we're gonna look at Dropout. So we're gonna talk about what Dropout is, why you would use it, and what exactly it does. So let's get started. So what Dropout is, is a method of randomly ignoring the units from certain neurons during training. So it's a form of regularization which is used in other types of machine learning and it was introduced in this paper which I've provided the link here. So if that definition is still a little confusing, let's proceed. So why would you use Dropout? Well the main reason you use Dropout is to prevent overfitting. So while we're training, our neurons can become codependent on each other and what this means is their weights can affect how the weights of other neurons get optimized. And as a result, we get this network that's specialized on the training data. But when we provide it new data in our test data, for example, it performs poorly. So this is what we call overfit or an overfit network. So there's two ways we can prevent this. Number one is to provide our network with more data and to let it train longer. But that can be tough if you're limited in the amount of data you have or the amount of computation you can do. But another way of preventing this is to introduce dropout. So this is the easier way of preventing overfitting. Now let's take a look at a diagram which helps explain what dropout is doing in our network. So this is a diagram I made based on a diagram in the paper that I linked. So we've got the standard network and we have a dropout network. So in our standard network, the Ys are our inputs, the Z is the output, B is bias, the W is weights, and you can see here that this would be the inputs going to an output that's gonna be passed into the next layer or the input of the next layer. So this is a basic diagram of a simple neuron. But in the dropout network, you can see that our inputs go to this little R cell, which then go to our Y with a little tilde on top. So what the R represents is our dropout. So the R has a certain probability where it'll just block the passage of the input from Y to the Y tilde. So these are gonna be randomly changing throughout the training. And so what they're doing is just kind of shutting off the input or blocking the input during steps in the training. So they're just little blocks that shut the inputs off. And again, they happen randomly. So now let's look at how this dropout performs in the real world. So what I've done is I've created three different models. So one has dropout with 40%. And then another one has dropout with 20%. And then my, finally we have a model with no dropout at all. So it's a basic convolution network. So the first layer is a convolution, then max pooling, dropout, flatten, and then our two fully connected layers. And the only difference is that dropout, the amount of dropout that we do. So now what I wanna show is that when we look at the summary, you can see here that for all of them, this is our 40% dropout. The actual model, they're identical for all of them. You can see the number of trainable parameters doesn't change. So this one's 173,000. This one again, 173,000. And again, the no dropout one, the same number of trainable parameters. So the model is the same for all of them. The only thing that's different is while it's training, these inputs are gonna be randomly shut on and off. So now let's see how this actually performs. Like what are the performance gains from this? So what I've done is trained all three models on 50 epochs, and then we're gonna plot the accuracy and the loss for each one. So what you see here is the validation accuracy and validation loss. So the blue line is the no dropout or 0% dropout. And you can see here that the accuracy is the lowest out of the three and the loss is the highest. And you can see the loss starts to creep back up. And this, I believe, is due to the network being overfit. Then we've got the dropout of 20%, which is the green line. And this one appears to have about the best accuracy. In the early stages, it's definitely the highest, 
but with more training you can see it's switching back and forth between the 40% dropout so it's hard to say which one's better but and also in the loss the 20% starts out better but the 40% starts to become lower than than the 20% but anyways you can see that we definitely have a clear advantage using dropout again there's probably some limit where if you go too high you set the dropout too high it's going to start affecting performance but the sweet spot seems to be somewhere between 20 and 40 percent based on the paper that i've linked you'll see they did some comparisons so yeah so that's dropout um, again it's to help prevent overfitting you can see that we definitely get a performance boost by using it so you should be using it in your models so that's going to do it for this one again if you have any questions feel free to leave them below um, i'll post these slides to my github so you're free to use them however you like and yeah in the next one we'll just move on to a new, a new topic in deep learning and feel free to make any requests and i'll see you guys in the next one peace